And because I have broad shoulders, I would hide my weight very well, which gives you the false sense of comfort because no one's telling you like, yeah, you know, you, you're getting pretty big there. No, it's just, oh, well, he's a big guy, you know, or women will say, oh, well, I like big guys or did you play football? So it's not you didn't look a certain way, but did you feel a certain way? I was suffering from chronic headaches, uh, tension headaches from different things that were triggering my uh, inflammation and my trigger points were constantly aching, which would lead to the headaches. And I knew that I had gotten way off the rails over the years because I had a large time period where I was working indoors and not leaving the house to really do too much because I was working from home. So and not having any kids or anything like that, it's easy to just get caught up in the cycle and you're just eating and you think that just because you're a big guy, there's nothing wrong with it. But you start noticing year after year that those clothes are getting bigger. Your health issues are increasing. Your energy levels are are different. Your body's ability to fight off soreness changes. You get winded very easily. And once I noticed all these issues were affecting me consistently and only getting worse, I didn't look at the food. I thought it was because of the car accidents I had been in throughout the years, even though they were minor or the years of playing sports. That's why. So you're trying to rationalize it and justify why your body is gone off the rails, but you're just making excuses. And the sad part about it, I'm a nutritionist. I'm a nutritionist. I'm a nutritionist. And I know for a fact that I was doing everything that I would tell my clients not to do and more of like do as I say, not as I do, which is the worst approach. And that could have affected it should have affected my business because it's like, well, how are you telling me not to do something when I look at your stomach and that doesn't look flat to me? But no one did any of that. It gets to a point where you got to put up or shut up no matter what it is. Something has to be your why. So I want to lead that into exactly what triggered the huge turnaround. It's going to sound extremely trivial. But it's the truth. In 2015, I'm a diehard Browns fan. I said to myself, if the Browns lose this game, I'm going vegan because I I think we made it to overtime. So obviously the Browns lost. I didn't have no intention on going vegan or anything like that. This was still when it wasn't a huge trend like it is now. Now it's become so much like a fad or so much like a just hashtag that has gotten out of control. From November 3rd of 2015, uh, right around, I'll say, mm, to about September, I was a uh, on a plant-based diet for a good solid two years, and I lost a lot of weight. I combined that with a lot of exercise and trying to really like get into I went from taking my nutritionist hat off to putting my client hat on and I literally became my own client. I held myself accountable and really focused on what foods are triggering my body to feel a certain way. So I had two years of veganism, lost the weight, but now I'm suffering from other issues. I'm having less of the headaches, but I'm still having them. Bloating issues. My energy levels are going up and down and I was just losing muscle and I was still struggling with soreness. Like I would have a workout and I would struggle getting out the bed the next day, which was all the same stuff that I was having before the weight loss. The only difference now is that I've lost the weight, but I'm still suffering from some of the same issues. I decided to start reincorporating meat in the spring of 2018. 
felt like I was purchasing drugs, trying to conceal illegal narcotics in the grocery bag because I, I didn't do this before. And I was looking around like, I hope someone doesn't recognize me because I also had built my personal brand as a nutritionist and advocating for a plant-based diet had a retail line of products that were in stores that I touted plant-based uh, as 100% plant-based products. So I started feeling better. And this is to each his own. Like I said, I'm a nutritionist, but I'm also a realist and I cater and customize everything to the needs of the client. Everything doesn't work for everybody. I'm not advocating one diet over the other. I believe that it's all about a well-rounded diet for the individual client. And my energy levels are starting to increase. Okay, good. So I'm filling in those gaps, but I'm still not consuming dairy. And I'm still not consuming gluten. Start noticing that I'm able to sustain some workouts better. Everything's on the up and up. Still losing weight. And now I'm maintaining it. Because by this time I went from 295 pounds. I got down to 197 pounds. After two years, I maintained that 197, which is where I'm at now. I usually hover between 195 and 201. The hardest part about the weight loss journey is, for one, you have to be comfortable in your own skin. You have to be comfortable with the fact that people are going to tell you things that, oh, well, what do you just eat? I didn't, I've heard it all. Oh, what do you just eat leaves off of trees and just all the different skinny jokes or whatever you want to call it. But I let it bounce off of me. It doesn't bother me at all anymore. At first, it used to kind of irritate me because it's like, well, look at you as if what you're doing is working so well for you. I'd rather look like this than look like that. That was the mentality I had. But then after a while, you just kind of go along with it and you embrace being you because you put in a lot of hard work to get to this point. So accept it and embrace it. And eventually other people will respect it. And quiet is kept. A lot of it is jealousy. A lot of people want to get to where you are at. They just either A, haven't been able to do it or B, they have done it before. But for something, whatever happened, they got back off the tracks. So that's the next thing. Also, understand that when you go through your journey, you're going to learn and discover a lot of stuff about yourself that you didn't even know that you had in you. You're going to uncover a lot of potential food insecurities. You're going to uncover some personal insecurities about your body and learning about your your mind is so, so enlightening, but also could be scary and intimidating, which a lot of people refrain from. They don't want to deal with that. So it's easy to just put on extra clothes or just assume that as you're getting older, this is just a part of life. And that's one of the biggest things I try to talk people out of is accepting their current reality as the end all be all. No, if you want to change something, change it. You don't have to wait until tomorrow. You don't have to wait till the next year. No, if you don't like what you're seeing, why not make strides now to do something about it? It all starts with the individual. No one can change you but you. But until you decide what that looks like, then you go ahead and do it. I did everything without supplements. I didn't do any special teas. I didn't do any special diets. I didn't do any of this stuff that you see people on YouTube um, pushing or on social media advocating. I didn't do any of that stuff. I took it back to the genesis, which is, I don't know. Here's an interesting concept about the truth of weight loss. Proper nutrition will overcome lack of exercise, but great exercise does not, excuse me, does not overcome proper nutrition. When you have them both Oh, it's a match made. It's a match made in heaven because you got both. You're well balanced and everything is going to move smoothly. But you will lose weight 
if your nutrition is on point, but you cannot out exercise a bad diet. But you have to understand that it goes beyond a diet. It's a lifestyle. Once you are comfortable with that lifestyle and understanding your relationship with food, the rest is going to be lovely because now you're not afraid of food. You love it. You, you get excited to learn about different ingredients and you get to learn things about yourself that you didn't even know you liked. Some people say, oh, no, I don't like mushrooms. I never ate mushrooms that I liked growing up. I just always just never liked them. But now I love them. Not even just from a nutritional standpoint, I've really embraced it. It opens your taste palates when you're on your weight loss journey. I'm not a chef. I'm not a cook. I'm not. I'm a functional eater, as I like to describe it. That means that I eat stuff that I know I need for my body. I'm not focused on the presentation, the color, the following the recipe to the T. But as a nutritionist, I pride myself on making sure that I understand the ingredients and the science behind the food, but also exactly how it affects my body or could potentially affect my client's body. Because you may do great with turmeric or cumin in your diet, but I have another client that that triggers an inflammatory response or they're great with this ingredient, but this may trigger a cytokine uh, storm in their body. Or it could be neurotoxic to their body. So these are different things that you have to understand that you can't just listen to everybody and anybody. You have to vet the source that's giving you the information, but also trust that it's okay to go along your journey without knowing everything. And just being comfortable with resetting your brain that all the stuff you knew about food is gone say like okay i thought this was healthy and most of the time i hear that at least two three times a week from a different client oh i thought this was healthy oh i thought i was doing well with this and i have to say like no and here's why that's the thing i educate you the same way that i would want to be educated with anything i'm going to tell you why that's the difference between a nutritionist or a dietitian that actually knows what they're doing versus someone that's just selling you something or someone that's just claiming to be what they're not or even a doctor. That's the difference between us and them. I'll, I don't want to say them like we're on one side and they're on the other because we're all should be part of this wellness journey of getting healthy together. But I don't feel like enough appreciation is given to those who actually have the skill and actually understand how it affects the individual. A trainer's job isn't to do that, but yet you have MLMs, you have trainers, and you have people that are, everyone is running around claiming they're uh, some kind of wellness coach or health coach or anything like that. I'm not saying you are or aren't, but after five minutes of talking to you, it's going to expose what you really are or what you really aren't. But for someone like myself, I had to first determine all of the stuff that I was doing wrong and accept the fact that, Marcus, you have spent a decade almost of destroying your body. You have to embrace the fact that while you are entering your 30s, this is when everything you've done in your 20s is going to come back full force or in your teens is going to come back. That's what I tell my clients. That's what I tell myself. So after six years, I am excited to say that I've kept the weight off and I feel great. I still have my aches and pains and I still have my just regular stresses of life and things along those lines. But I'm never sick. I don't even I can't even recall the last time I've had to take an extended period of time away from doing anything because of illness. And I feel like I did in my 20s. I'm vibrant. I love exercise. I'm, I'm kind of like a fitness junkie, which is not good because I'm obsessed with exercise, which isn't good. I even right under me right now, I have a death cycle so I can constantly stay moving 
even while I'm sitting at a desk. But that's just what I have to do for myself to keep me going and keep me motivated. You have to find that for yourself. And I hope that watching a video from someone like me has who has gone through it and also someone who understands it from both sides of the aisle can help you in your journey, but just give you some words of encouragement and motivation as well. So that's my video for you all. This is Marcus, and I'm super excited to present this video to you, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Leave your comments below.